great deal of discussion these days, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, about the nature of privilege. Through an evolving interpretation of history, we are coming to understand privilege in a dramatically new ways. God's ancient people were in a position of privilege from their perspective, since their narrative, which is part of the Christian narrative, is that God chose the ancient Israelites as his people. Being chosen by God came with certain privileges and more importantly, certain responsibilities. By the time Jesus came into this world, that concept was changed from its original meaning of being privileged. Having been oppressed for hundreds of years, they built up their own sense of self-importance, which was especially embodied by the leadership who wanted to carry favor with their Roman overlords. Jesus' ministry was not to the self-privileged leaders, but rather to the common people, the ones who suffer, the ones who thirst for simple things like healing and being a part back of the society like the lepers did in this Gospel's reading today. What he did not do was to lead a populist revolution to overthrow Roman rule or argue for the common people to claim the privilege their leaders retained for themselves. Rather, Jesus showed them and us a different way. He advocated love over hate, harmony over division, and humility over privilege. Today, the Holy Orthodox Church honors St. Anthony the Great, widely regarded as the father of Orthodox monasticism. An Egyptian by birth and enjoying privilege as his parents were wealthy and had social status, he yearned for a pure experience of and relationship with God and shed all that stood in the way of that, including the privilege of his youth, his birthrights, and the community of constant human interaction. There is a certain irony in considering the life of St. Anthony, who set the pattern for desert asceticism and monasticism in the face of the COVID lockdowns. The isolation that most of us are struggling with is something the monastics yearn for. In contrast, the very idea of claiming privilege is something the monastics rejected. Privilege, they understood, would lead to their spiritual ruin. St. Anthony said, I saw the snares that the enemy spreads out over the world. And I said, groaning, what can get through 
from such snares. Then I heard a voice saying to me, humility. In St. Anthony, we see the heart of Orthodox spirituality, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, not an ecstatic spiritual experiences, not sentimental emotionality, not the way of privileged status, but the way of humility, a real humility. The irreligious cynic suggests that a virtuous life is impossible. But St. Anthony challenges that notion in saying that the virtuous life is not impossible, but it is difficult and not easily maintained once achieved. This is the fight on this earth to maintain it. God honors the attempt and especially the perseverance. There is much St. Anthony and the desert monasticism he introduced by virtue of living it can teach us about dealing with adversity. Obedience to God does not mean slavery. It means freedom to see beyond your own parameters, to be able to risk beyond your comfort zone, kindness to others and to ourselves, and gratitude have their aid and their outcome in humility. In today's gospel, we see humility at work. Jesus healed 10 lepers, but only one came back to thank him. How often have we received something not in gratitude and seeing it as a blessing, but rather as a right or a privilege which we demand? This is the opposite of humility. As is common with the miracles and the teachings of our Lord, there is a twist, an unexpected element. In the account of the 10 lepers, if you recall, the one who came back to thank Jesus was a Samaritan, a member of a group on the periphery of Jewish society who were largely deplored by the Jewish mainstream. He was outside the parameters. Repeatedly, Jesus would hold up Samaritans who in faith accepted him fully as examples of humility and openness to his gospel and thus finding favor in God's sight. Their shunned position in Jewish society was an aid to their humility and ability to accept Jesus and his message. As we chant from the Gospel of Luke in every ortho service, like we did today, the Lord has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. My beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us come to understand what true humility and obedience to God is as we honor St. Anthony the Great. Let us come to recognize that the path of humility and obedience to God is not only for monastics, but for us all. And may through the prayers of St. Anthony the Great, God have mercy on us and save us. Amen.